in headlines. Bandits abduct two in Kwali Area Council of Abuja as army redeploys senior officers amid rising insecurity. Governor Wike to address aftermath of presidential primaries vows to remain in PDP. 23 states' federal capital territory receives 24.45 billion naira from conditional grant schemes. And on the foreign scene, New York raises monkeypox alarm as San Francisco declares emergency. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I'm Dashan Husseina Usman. Now the news in detail. Governor Nyesom Wiki of River State has reacted to the events that have unfolded in the aftermath of the presidential primary election of the People's Democratic Party. The governor, who spoke on Friday at the Port Harcourt International Airport, faulted the speech by the PDP presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar on the day he unveiled Governor Ifanyo Kowa at his, as his running mate, while accusing the former vice president of telling lies against him, as well as using some chieftains of the main opposition party to spread falsehood against his person, the governor vowed to respond to both the party's flag bearer and the party chieftains, whom he described as Atiku's attack dogs, one by one and line by line in due time. He said posterity will not forgive him should he fail to set the record straight and promise to clear the air after the commissioning of the projects lined up for inauguration by the state government. A fresh attack has been recorded in Kwali Area Council of the Federal Capital Territory amid the rising insecurity in the nation's capital. According to a resident of Chida community, Dangana Musa, a driver alongside his conductor was abducted in the latest attack which occurred on Thursday evening. He said the driver identified as Atazamu Azaki and his conductor Ayuba John went to load charcoal at a farm in the area when the bandits broke in. Musa added that the kidnappers who wielded sophisticated weapons whisked the duo away at gunpoint but later released John, who was asked to go and inform the victim's family members about the abduction. Spokesperson of the FCT Police Command, Ade Josephine, is yet to officially confirm the kidnap incident. Some soldiers were reportedly killed when Boko Haram terrorists raided a military checkpoint around Zumarok in Niger State on Thursday night. The area close to Madala town is a few meters away from Zuba, along the Abuja Kaduna Highway. A source told Daily Trust that the attackers arrived at the spot some minutes after 7 p.m. and opened fire immediately. The attack comes amid heightened tension in the federal capital territory over likely terrorist attacks. The Nigerian army has redeployed senior officers in a major reshuffle that affects some principal staff officers of the army headquarters, general officers commanding, corps commanders, commandants of training institutions, brigade commanders and commanding officers, among others. This comes amid the renewed attacks by terrorists and other armed non-state actors, as well as the day after the military authorities said they have adopted a new strategy to tackle the threats in the country. Brigadier General Nyema Nwachuku, who is the Director of Army Public Relations, announced the redeployment of the officers in a statement on Friday. He said the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahaya, has approved the posting of some senior officers of the Nigerian Army to command instruction, instructional and staff appointments across the services, formations and units. Away from that story, the Federal Capital Territory Administration has reinvigorated the G7 security operations to secure the territory. The G7 security operations involve collaboration and partnerships with states that are contagious to the territory. A statement by Anthony Ogunleye, Chief Press Secretary to the FCT Minister, said the FCT Commissioner of Police, Sunday Babaji, made this known during the FCT Monthly Security Committee meeting. He explained that the operation would involve taking the fight to the bandits and terrorists in their camps, which are mostly located in states bordering the FCT. The police commissioner, however, called for the collaboration and cooperation of residents of the FCT to provide actionable and timely intelligence to the security agencies. 
people of Kadiso village in Foskari local government area are fleeing to towns and villages presumed safer following a threat letter allegedly sent by a terrorist kingpin, Adamu Aliero. The handwritten letter in Hausa language was sent to the people of Kadiso and obtained by Trust TV in Katsana. Abdullah Hayyamadi tells us more. Kadiso is a farming community in Faskari local government which has been attacked repeatedly by terrorists in recent times. The worst among the series of attacks on Kadiso village is the one which claimed over 100 lives, including women and children. During that attack, over 500 animals were also rustled and properties worth millions of naira destroyed. Sometimes I begin to wonder if really there is leadership for government in Nigeria. People are being killed daily by terrorists and they move freely as if they are paid to kill. And this letter sent to the villagers not certified by Trust Television News, Adamu Aleru claimed that Kadiso village was attacked because some innocent Fulani people were once gruesomely murdered in the village. From the time we received the alleged letter, almost three to four days ago, hundreds of people, mostly women and children, have fled this village. Please, what evil have we committed? Meaning that the attack was a retaliatory one. Besides that, Adamu Aleru claimed that Kadiso attack was not masterminded by him as alleged by Governor Aminu Masari and police authorities in Katana. In the letter alleged to be sent to the people of Kadiso, Adamu Aleru is asking why Katana State Governor and police authorities in Katana are saying he attacked Kadiso village. He also went further to ask whether he is the one who attacked Kuje Correctional Facility or the Kaduna passenger train. Far from that, the letter ignited fear and apprehension in Kadiso village, which resulted to many deserting their ancestral homes. The battle is getting tougher by the day. Is this insecurity or is it hunger and abject poverty? Which is which? I'm really confused. The villagers are, however, calling for the deployment of more security personnel and the immediate restoration of peace to all the insecurity prone areas. Dozens have been killed, hundreds of animals rustled, with unspecified number of people abducted in Faskari, Sabwa, Dandumi, Kankara, Safana, Batsari, Kurifi, Dusuma, and Jibia local governments since the Tabanin of the terrorist kingpin Adamu Aleru. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Trust Television News, Katana. A heavy-duty truck involved in a lone accident has blocked a major road in Lagos. Authorities of the agency managing emergencies in the state have said. The permanent secretary of the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency, Olufemi Damilola Okeo Sanyitolu, disclosed this in a statement on Friday. Narrating how the crash took place, Okeo Sanyitolu, who did not state the time of the incident, said it occurred on the inward section of the Palm Groove or Banikoro end along the popular Ikorodu Road. The truck was reported to have lost control and rammed into a culvert along the road as a result of a brake failure. Although no death was recorded, the Lasema bus said the truck blocked an entire lane, including the dedicated section of the bus rapid transit. The National Union of Benway State Students has issued a 14-day ultimatum to the president to end the current ASU strike. The group says the ultimatum has become necessary as members can no longer tolerate the continued strike, which they say has cost them and their parents untold hardship. The report. The students, speaking through their president and the president of the Students' Union Government of the University of Agriculture, Makadi, lamented the endless face-off between ASU and the striking union, adding that the lives of students have been brought to a total standstill. The message of Benue State students is clear. Federal government should resolve the differences between them and ASU so that we could go back to our school and continue with our learning. 
We therefore wish to hasten Buhari's process so as to resolve his issue. And as such, we, the Benue State students, are giving him a 14 days ultimatum. The failure to tackle the issue of as strike, we will be going to massive protest. We, the student union, we are calling on the federal government and even the ASU members because we don't know any reason or anything that is going on between them. What should they should come in alliance and then comply with what the union, any union that involves in the uh, uh, high institution, they should come together to comply in alliance to, to comply with them and then understand with them because there is a saying that when the two elephants uh, fight, the ground is a victim. As a matter of fact, we the students are the ones facing this. Other students who said strike actions have become a norm in Nigerian public universities urged their fellow students to engage themselves in useful ventures while awaiting the outcome of the negotiations. I've been into the um, bakery business. I make snacks and supply to people who want it. Yes. And I think others should also look for a line to you know, get themselves meaningfully employed. You know? For Benue State, for example, you can go to the farm. This is the farming season. So many things. Yes. So instead of just sitting at home and waiting for us to call off the strike, my dear, find some way to make money and you'll be better off for it when school resumes. Public universities in Nigeria have been under lock since February 2022, while the organized workers' unions in the country protested Tuesday and Wednesday to compel the federal government to end the five-month strike. You're watching Trust News Update coming up after the break. Why second-hand materials are becoming popular? Do stay with us. To every politician, as the campaigns gain momentum and passions begin to rise, remember the errors of your opponents do not make you a success. Do not run down your opponent and inflame passions to violence between and among your supporters. What counts is what you plan to do for the electorate and how you intend to relieve the sufferings and bring succor. Nigeria is in dire need of patriotic leaders at all levels. Leaders who will make national development their priority. Concentrate on telling the electorate what you intend to do when you get into office. Focus on making your vision clear to the electorate. Don't engage in verbal abuses, fake news or speeches. Keep dealing with issues that will bring progress. You win the hearts and minds of the people by being above board, by being civil, patriotic, and showing empathy. Let's join hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. A message from the National Orientation Agency. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. Let's take a look at some of our major stories. We told you that bandits abduct two in Kwali area council of Abuja as army redeploys senior officers amid rising insecurity. You also heard that Governor Wike to address aftermath of presidential primaries vows to remain in PDP. 
Moving to more stories, menstrual hygiene as an integral part of a woman's well-being can be challenging where clean water, toilet facilities and sanitary products are inadequate. Trust TV spoke with one of the freed female victims of Kaduna Abuja train attack in Kaduna and she shares how women hostages handle menstrual hygiene while in captivity. Beyond the trauma of isolation and fear of being killed, female victims of the Abuja Kaduna train attack have to grapple with the extra trauma of menstrual hygiene. One of the freed victims could not stop being emotional posing at intervals to compose herself while recounting her experience in the forest with her abductors. Honestly speaking, I don't even, I'm not sure if I even want to talk about that because that's one of the terrible and traumatic side of it all. I'm not sure if I really want to talk about it, but then like, it wasn't hygienic. It was, it was dangerous knowing that you have to share a rag. Actually, someone from the men gave us his clothes, like his agbada, and we had to cut it into pieces. And we shared it, like we cut it into pieces, knowing that, okay, when Mr. A starts menstruating, uses it, finish, before Mr. B starts, wash it, dry it, Mr. B uses the same rag, like... <sighs> She is optimistic, but remaining abducted passengers will be freed in the not too distant future. I want to remain optimistic about their release and be hopeful, like keeping my hope high and hoping that whatsoever the case is, I just pray that God just intervene because he is the author of it all. Like that's the only person I can depend on right now. Among those she hopes will be freed one day is her sister that was kidnapped along with her. She urges the federal government to meet the demands of the abductors. Because even the government, like... But I hope, I'm very sure that, well, I don't know when, I don't know how long it's going to take, but then I know that no matter what time, at God's time, they are definitely going to come back in one piece. While the relatives of the train attack victims are praying to reunite with their loved ones, many believe that stronger synergy between security agencies and communities will make a huge difference in defeating banditry and terrorism in the country. Bella Musa, Trust TV News Kaduna. The use of second-hand items in Nigeria is quite popular and is often triggered by a lack of strong purchasing power. In this report, Chairman Dabang explores Nigeria's second-hand economy. The report. Whether you call it Bendown Select, Okrika, Tokumbo or Thrift, the fact is it is almost impossible to overstate the importance of the social construction that goes into buying and selling of second-hand items in Nigeria today. Nigerians have become so dependent on second-hand items that you can always find something fairly used to buy. From furniture, clothing, everyday electrical appliances, phones and even cars, all for a fraction of the original price. Recent figures released by the United Nations shows that 80% of Africans wear second-hand clothes, while Nigeria happens to be one of the largest importers of second-hand items. Today we find out why in Panteka Market located in the FCT. I've been here for like at least five years selling these kind of materials including uh, beds, wardrobe, TV stand, dressing mirror, I mean the whole house interior, anything that has to do with house interior. I decided to be part of this business. Uh, let me just splash back a little. Uh, I graduated from uh, Nasarawa State University, Kefi. So after my graduation, I realized that uh, um, uh, job has now become a hot kick. Government job has become a hot kick. So I just give an advice to myself. Let's assume I never been to school. What will I do for a living? Alhamdulillah, we thank God. The business is moving so fine and is profitable. Uh, if not as a result of all these problems and obstacles, I would have said I prepare to be here 
than to have a 300,000 job. There are some people who renovate their houses, who need those things to be moved away. So these people buy them, and we buy from them. Some of these things they sell are high quality, even more than the one in the shop. Sometimes I don't have money for new ones. And again, there are some of the um, imported um, materials, goods, that some of these big men in Abuja, you know, they usually renovate their houses. So they buy new ones and they make their way with, with the old ones. The old ones find their way in this market and you can buy those ones cheap and, you know, high quality things from here. The use of pre-owned pieces in Nigeria is not peculiar. The expansion of the market dates back to the 1950s and 1960s where Okrika in River State was the only port where second-hand items from Europe could arrive. As of today, Nigeria's second-hand economy continues to thrive. Chamun Dabeng, Trust TV News, Abuja. The Senior Special Assistant to the President on Sustainable Development Goals at Dejoke Orelokbe at Defulire has said 23 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory have received 24 billion naira from the conditional grant schemes. She said this Thursday while featuring in the ministerial media briefing organized by the Presidential Communications Team at the Presidential Villa in Abuja. Aurel Lokbe at Defulire said it was provided as an incentive to invest more of their resources into areas of national development priorities and the Millennium Development Goals. The fund dispersed from 2015 till date was introduced in 2007 with a 50% matching grant from the federal government and 50% from the participating states. The project executed were on three critical sectors water and sanitation, 732 first project has been done, providing water, sanitation to communities, to schools, and um, through our partners in support with our sub partner, the donor agencies. 494 primary health care centers are built and equipped in different states. 616 education facility, notably school, were built, equipped for young people for the basic education at the state levels. 1,150,000 women and men were empowered. The federal government says it will start implementing a 5% inclusive excise duty on telecommunication services in Nigeria. The development is coming months after President Muhammadu Buhari approved excise duty on telephone recharge cards and vouchers. Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning Zainab Ahmed disclosed this on Thursday at a stakeholders forum in Abuja organized by the Nigerian Communications Commission. Executive Vice Chairman NCC Omar Dambata said the excise duty was part of the 2022 fiscal policy measures, adding that the excise duty covered both prepaid and postpaid telecommunication services. On the foreign scene, New York and San Francisco have issued monkeypox alerts as cases continue to rise with the United States facing a shortage of vaccines. Authorities in New York said on Thursday that the virus represented an imminent threat to public health across the state. Health Commissioner Mary Bassett said the declaration would help health departments engage in response and prevention activities to access additional state reimbursement. Meanwhile, in San Francisco, California, authorities declared monkeypox a local public health emergency. Mayor London Breed said the risk of disease remained low, but the declaration going into effect on August 1 would help in the mobilization of resources. And finally, in sports, Nigerian Football Federation has recognized Chike Lue Eloyesi, former international footballer, as the chairman of the Anambra State Football Association. The recognition again came barely two years after the Anambra State Football Association election held on October 30, 2022. A letter signed by Joshua Onoja, 
Secretary NFF Electoral Committee on July 28 says Eleonyesi was the only candidate qualified for the election based on the findings of the Appeals Committee. The letter stated that the idea of voting for or against a sole candidate was a serious aberration that should not be allowed to stand. According to the NFF, if a new election is held, the petitioner will stand or still stand as the sole candidate. With this, we've come to the end of Trust News Update. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Dashan Hussein Usman. Thanks for watching.